Hi everybody, my name is Samer Audi and this is part 11 of the Kali Linux security tool series. I apologize for not having posted for a while. I've had a nasty cough that made it challenging to post videos. In the last video, I concluded the information gathering group. So this video marks the start of a new group called vulnerability analysis tools. And today we will start with fuzzing. Before we start with the tool, as always, let's see what this category is all about. OWASP defines fuzz testing or fuzzing as a black box software testing technique, which basically consists in finding implementation bugs in applications or systems. The way that we do that is to send bad data called malformed data into our application. Simply put, when we perform fuzzing, we are intentionally sending this bad data, this malformed data, to a program in order to make it fail or at least generate an error. Let's take an example. Say you want to enter your age into a web application or an app or any kind of a system. It's a numeric value, specifically it's an integer value, but instead you entered text value or a decimal number, 27.4. This may cause an error, especially if the system does not handle such errors. Instead of manually doing it, of course, we will be using tools that automate sending or injecting these strings of data into our program. Therefore, fuzzers or fuzzing tools are grouped under vulnerability analysis tools. Before we start with our tools for today, let me show you few real life fuzz vectors on OWASP. OWASP is the open web application security project. So here fuzzing it targets web application. And if you're familiar with a tool like Zap in web application testing, it has its own fuzzers. And basically we have two subsection of fuzzers, recursive fuzzing, which basically consists of recursively changing the value you can see here in the URL. And instead of doing it manually, the fuzzing tool will do it for us. Otherwise it would take forever. The second subcategory is the replaceive fuzzing. So basically here, this is an example of cross-site scripting where we are injecting JavaScript or XSS into the URL of our target. So hopefully now you have basic understanding of fuzzing and we are ready to start with our fuzzing tools. There are four tools, all are part of one suite called the Spike Suite. Spike is a fuzzer creation kit, meaning it allows us to create fuzzers. What Spike does is it provides an API for us to create our own fuzzers if we want. So this toolkit defines a number of primitives that allow us to construct fuzzed messages called spikes. So spikes would be those malformed data that we will send to our target. And then the four tools that you see here in front of you, our spike fuzzing tools, are simply command line tools that act as both interpreters for the string values for the malformed data. And of course, they will also send them in a certain way to our target. And they're basically used in the same way. Let's see them in action. Here are our four command line tools and they're essentially used in the same way. I will demonstrate one of them. But before we get to them, remember that the Spike Suite has two parts, these tools, but then there are also spikes. The spikes are text files available on the system and the job of these tools is to interpret what's inside them and send them to our target. Very simple. 
let's start by locating the spike files which has the .spk extension. You can see that we have a lot of spikes and they are organized by target type or protocol. For instance, you have the SMTP, the FTP, and so on and so forth. If we open one of these files, we will see the string variables that I mentioned earlier. So let's do that. These are the semi-random entries, the malformed entries that we will send to our target application. As you can see, there are simple strings values, including an IP address, some names, and so on. The string commands provide a way of adding data into your spikes. The string variable, for example, here is one of the most important commands within the spike because it allows us to add fuzz strings. Now that we located our spikes, we can use our tools or interpreters, giving them the required parameters. Let's see what I'm talking about. For instance, we can fuzz TCP-based applications using the TCP script interpreter, generic send TCP. Each one of our tools in this video is capable of sending data from the spikes via that particular protocol to a particular IP address and port of our choice. These are the parameters that we will use in our tools. The help system shows us how to use these tools, which is the tool name, followed by our target, the host, which it would be an IP address, followed by a target port, something like 441, for instance. And then, of course, we would use one of our spike scripts or the .spk files that I just showed you, all of this is intuitive and logical. However, what's not so straightforward are the last two parameters. The skip variable and the skip string allow us to move into the middle of a fuzzing session defined by the spike script. So for example, if we use zero and zero as values for these two parameters, then basically we're saying start from the very beginning, which is the default, by the way. If you want to skip the first two, then you replace the zero with the two and so on. I think we are ready to test our fuzzers. I have a target up and running and to be honest, I didn't even test it, but it doesn't have a particular service that is vulnerable to fuzzing. So we will test it together. But nonetheless, the tools would work in the same way. So first of all, uh, just to show you, my target has few services that I am aware of. So if I do, for example, a quick scan using Nmap, I can see here that I have the SMTP service running. And I know that there is an SMTP spike available, so I will use that. If you remember the parameter, the first one is the host, which is the IP address for my target. Then a port, and in this case, it is port 25 for SMTP, followed by the spike script, and then the default values for the skip variable and the skip string 00. So basically our fuzzer interpreted the spike script and took the string values and sent them to our target on port 25. If our target is vulnerable to fuzzing, then basically it would either generate errors on that side it, or it will cause it to crash. The other three tools are used 
essentially in the same way. So if you open each one of them and you look at the usage, you will see that we have the name of the tool followed by some target on some port. We use a script and then the last two parameters explained earlier. This is it for this video, but what's next for you? The tools are easy to use. They're not the main issue here. Remember, there are two components in this suite, the tools and the spikes or the spike script. So for you to go further, you really need to explore these spikes and or explore the possibility of creating your own spike scripts. And this concludes our video. If you found it helpful, if you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Thank you for watching.